make sure that absolutely everything is clean. So it goes through this three, these three processes all the time. Every single utensil we use, every time, goes through this system of wash, sterilize, rinse. And the reason it's so important to rinse is, of course, that you don't want to kill your good bacteria that you put in the water. So it's very important to rinse everything. First thing you do is, of course, measure the temperature when the milk comes in at 7 and make sure it is at 30. Then you add the culture. If you're going to start making cheese, this is, this is what you should buy, CHN 22, because it's you, you can use it for mass, you can use it for mass cast, for fromage spray, um, gouda, um, feta. So, so I would recommend that you start off with this particular culture. And that culture is a bacteria, and the bacteria need to liven up because they've been uh, deep frozen at minus 18 degrees. So we put them in the warm milk, at seven o'clock, and they will start getting active again. And that's what we call pre-ripening. Um, so these are lactic bacteria. They live with the sugar in the milk. And the sugar in the milk is called lactose. And the lactose and their byproduct, they take in the lactose and they produce <coughs> lactic acid. So we're getting an acid, more and more acid product here. So animal rennet. You get many different kinds of rennets. This is an animal rennet. And what rennet does is it works with proteins. So where we've had the bacteria working together with sugar in the milk, this works together with protein in the milk. And it makes the proteins stick together like uh, lattice work. So you'll have um, a whole lot of loose floating proteins. And then as a result of the fact that there's calcium in the milk and you add rennet, those two factors result in the fact that the proteins stick together by means of the calcium ones. Now you know why it's so important that there's calcium in the milk when you make cheese. So you need calcium in the grass, you need calcium in your feed, and if you don't have that, you can also add calcium to the milk. To in, in order that the, the rennet works properly. Okay, so, so we've got 150 litres, and uh, so it's 20 per 100, so it's 30 moles that we need, and this is 10 to 3 of these. I'm adding the rennet to a little bit of cool water, just to dilute it. So whereas with the bacteria that you added, the cultures, you can't be very accurate, it is more important to be accurate with the rennet. Right, again we measure the temperature of the milk. Okay, it's 30 de degrees exactly. Look at the time, you need a good clock in your dairy or in your kitchen. Okay, it's coagulated. Can everybody must please come and have a look. Okay. At seven o'clock, we added uh, bacterial culture. Okay. And then Which is the same as what you added. Exactly here. the same. Okay. And then it, um, it's uh, the bacteria came alive. We pre-ripened. The bacteria ate the sugar, formed lactic acid, and that normally takes about an hour. And then we added the rennet, which is an enzyme, mm -hmm. which uh, acts on the proteins as opposed to the sugars and uh, makes the protein stick together. But they can only stick together if there's calcium in the milk. Okay. So that was at so 7 o'clock? 7 o'clock we added the culture. Gosh. So 
So this is what you call coagulated mm. milk. We put this is very sharp on one side and blunt on the other. And now I'm going to use a figure of eight. So we're cutting the curd. And why are we cutting it? Because we want the water to come out. more in the middle than on the sides. Remember, what we're doing is when we make cheese, we're making an acid product, which we've already started to do. We're just going to make a dry product. So, we're cutting the curd to let out the water so that we can make a dry product. Okay, so obviously it makes sense that the smaller you cut the curd, the more the water is going to come out, the drier the cheese is going to be. And the bigger the curd, of course, the wetter the cheese. It's very just common sense. Now, what happens is we're going to heal the curd. Let's just stand. Okay, you see how the whey is, is coming out fast and furious? So we're going to stir now for should be 20 minutes. And the reason we stir it, it's another way to get the whey on the curd. There are three ways you can do it. One is to how big you cut it, two is how much you stir it, and three is how much you heat it. So those are the three ways in which you get way out of the curd. So the more heat you use, like in Swiss cheeses and, and, and Parmesan, even Tala's, they heat this up at a higher temperature, like up to 50 degrees. So that makes it dry, and they stir a lot. And you get a dry cheese, and if you get a dry cheese, you need to mature it for a long time. the size of it. There are some big pieces in it, but you can't do anything about that. If you stir it too hard or heat it too quickly, um, it will form skin and then the whey won't come out. I want to get this curd to become dull. That's a big factor. It's shiny and then it becomes dull. Remember, there in that blob of water is albumin protein which is a soluble protein. It means it's dissolved in a way. And the cotter is made from that protein. So we slowly add and stir this water now. We, 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 we must, don't want to shock the curds, you know, so you mustn't just pour it all in. You mustn't just empty the bucket into it. You know. Can you see how it's already becoming, the curds becoming all yellow? And, and see, it's becoming dull. Mm -hmm. it's not shiny anymore. Up above 37. That 
is at 35. That's where I want it to come. If you suddenly you haven't added all your water and you've already come to 35, then you must stop adding that hot water and you must add water at 35. So, one way of getting the water out of the curd is to cut the curd. Another way is to stir it and another way is to heat it. So the more you cut, the more you heat, the more you stir, the drier the ultimate cheese will be. The more there's whey in the curd, the more you will have the fats, sugars, bacteria in the ultimate cheese. And then you will have the more acid and the more wet cheese. And the acid cheese, as it matures, can become bitter. If you want to make a maturing cheese, you want to make a cheese that you want to mature for a long time, then you must know that you must cut a bit smaller, stir a bit more, heat a bit more. If you want to make a cheese that's slightly wetter, more acid, you must um, cut it a little bit bigger, stir a bit less, heat a bit less. Okay, now what you do, okay, this is, you see it's gone yellowish and dull. This is a very important point, but we're not ready to put it in the mould yet. It's still going to get a little bit more, a little more duller and a little less shiny. So what happens, starts happening now is that you can press the curd together and then you can press it, press it, and then you can just crumble it apart again. Mm. Now we're going to leave it for half an hour. It's half an hour needn't be half an hour. It's a, it's a time span when you just keep looking at the curd and thinking, I put it in the moulds yet or not? Is it, is it firm enough? Is it dry enough? Do I want to make a cheese I want to mature? Or do I want to make a wettish cheese that's acidy but will sell quickly? It'll have more flavour quicker. Yeah. So you see it's how dull it's become? From what it was. <laughs> Looks good to me. Mm. Yep. Now remember that I do cut cup. curd quite small because this is very fatty milk. The fattier your milk is, the smaller you cut your curd. So again, this has been through the whole process. It's been washed, sterilized, and rinsed. Put this front in. Does is it stops the curd from coming out. And you see this very little bar. Because of that curd hoop, we can throw that back. Beautiful. So now we're going to fill the mold. At this stage, if you wanted to add herbs, you would add herbs now. Well, it is and how yellow it is and the size of it and the smell of it. It's already sticking to the back. You of course want to lose as little curd as possible. The curd is where the money is. This is to push the curds together so that you get the way coming out of the curd. Okay. So I'm doing the same with you.
certain amount of weight and what it depends on is the weight of the cheese um, you press five times the weight of the cheese directly on the cheese okay so this is a 450 gram 500 gram cheese so what five <coughs> times that is 2.5 kilos Now it's got this because this you can get nets for lids, but we we be a little bit cheapskate here because they're so expensive. As I said, you know, I told you one of these for six hundred grand. Um, that we rather just use the cloth. Did you see what happened? Net ridges. You see this ridge, and this is the reason why we also turn the cheese over when we're pressing. So. So that one that's lopsided, can you press it right now? Uh, no. That's probably not, it's probably going to get more skew or whatever. But what we're going to do is we're going to what's called ripe the cheese tonight. We leave it in the mold overnight and then it goes and be beautifully straight again. Is you put a bathroom scale here and then you hang this weight at these different points and you just read off the weight on the bathroom scale and you mark your points on the lever. Clever little trick, another fine sky trick. Water because you meant to press it half weight for yes. <laughs> two hours and then full weight. So let's see if this press is going to hold on, hold, hold up to it. Make it even harder and more firm. Okay, so this is, it all start looking like, like that. Mm -hmm. See. So quite a bit of brine for the. Big cheeses. Okay. I guess it's we're going to make 20%, we need one kilo of salt per five liters of water. Now we need 20 liters of brine, so we need to have two kilos per 20 liter is, that's a 10%, so we need four kilos per 20 liter. <laughs> 20 liters of water, and I'm measuring where 20 liters is, then percent solution, so we need four kilos of salt. The salt packet. So, you, so you see, the salt takes up quite a lot of space. So when you make solutions, you always make up to. So we're making up to 20 liters. That's why what I did is I measured 20 liters of water here and I made a mark. Then I put the salt in the bucket, and now I add water up to the 20 liters. In the back of your manual, there's a page with the culture. You can look at your index in the front. It says, I want to do it. So the, the calcium chloride is added to the milk to increase the calcium 
to the milk, but also to the brine to stop the calcium leaking out of the cheese into the brine. So the dosage is, we are now adding 300 moles of calcium chloride to the brine. So you need 15 mol per liter. And you need 15 mol per 100 liter of milk when you add it to the milk. But then on top of that, we also have to make the brine acid. It needs to be virtually the same acidity as the cheese. So around about five. And the way we do that is we add citric acid. And you can buy this at Smog. You make brine once and then you use it continuously. So you, once your cheese is brined, you take it out of the brine and you use that same brine for your next batch of cheese. But you add some salt to the water, to the brine. Now you need to know how much. And for that, so of course, some of the salt has gone into the cheese, so now your brine isn't as concentrated as it was the day before. So you get what's called a brine meter. And you put that in the salt water, and you add a bit of salt to have a look. It's just a percentage. Okay. And percentage salt. So you just add a little bit of salt in each time. But you can keep a brine up to a year. So you must keep your brine in the fridge. And you keep it in your cold room. 